Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is iPhone Monitor here, and I'm going to be continuing my three part series that I'm doing on WWDC 2013 with talking about the new Macs that were announced today at WWDC. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so unfortunately, Apple did not announce the MacBook Pro, which was kind of disappointing to me because I actually wanted to get one and I told my friend to wait for one, but unfortunately, they did not announce a new MacBook Pro. But they did announce two new Macs. Firstly, they did announce the MacBook Air. So, the MacBook Air, the main thing that they have is very augmented battery life. So, essentially, for the MacBook Air on the 11 inch, they went from 5 hours to 9 hours. And for the 13 inch, they went from 7 to 12 hours, which 12 hours is pretty much a whole day of using your computer, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. You can pretty much watch three or four movies in a whole day if you wanted to. And also these new MacBook Airs have fourth generation Intel Core processors, which are the Haswell ULT processors. And these are the next generation i3, i5, and i7 processors, as you know. Also the new MacBook Airs utilize the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi networking instead of the normal 802.11 N. And this new 802.11 AC is actually three times faster than the 802.11 N. The only downside in my opinion is that the devices that you're using your computer with must be compatible with the Wi-Fi networking that you're using. And since right now, not a lot of devices uh, are compatible with this new AC Wi-Fi networking, pretty much when you get the new MacBook Air, a lot of the things you use aren't going to be compatible. But Apple did announce new time machines and AirPort Extremes to support this new networking capability. These two devices come in two and three terabyte hard drive configurations. So as for pricing and availability, the MacBook Air will be available today. And the 11 inch starts at $999 with a 128 gigabyte instead of the old 64. So you are getting an upgrade and it does still utilize a solid state drive. And the 13 inch is going to be starting at $1099 with a 128 gigabyte hard drive. And I'll put a picture uh, to my right that has all the details about that. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the MacBook Air. So let's move on to the MacBook Pro, which in my opinion was probably one of the most exciting parts of the whole conference. Okay, so for the Mac Pro, they didn't actually release a lot of information about it. It's still a sneak peek kind of thing and it's still under the wraps, but they did release a commercial about it and they did talk about some of the specs it's gonna have and they did talk about the design. So basically the design is a spherical tube shaped computer, which actually looks really cool. And also it's actually one eighth of the volume of the old Mac Pro, which is absolutely incredible. Incredible. You can carry this thing around so much easier. You don't need to lug it around. It's going to be light. It's going to be a lot more portable and very easy for people who have work and just want to carry it back and forth between their different offices and such. Also, this has a new generation of the Intel Xenon processor, which is just absolutely crazy. That's more processing power than you'll ever need. And it can go up to 12 cores, which is honestly just crazy. And also the RAM is 1866 megahertz and it's DDR3 RAM up to 60 gigabytes per second bandwidth. That's absolutely insane. You'll be able to do pretty much anything you want the memory will always be there you want to have any limitations on the memory whatsoever with this computer. Also, it's going to utilize a new form of flash that Apple is introducing called the PCIe flash, and that can read your data at 1.25 gigabytes per second, and it can write it at one gigabyte per second, which is honestly amazing. When I try to put stuff on my flash drive or just write files, it takes forever. This will honestly happen in the blink of an eye with one gigabytes per second write time. Additionally, they announced the Thunderbolt 2, and this has six service ports, and it has a 20 gigabytes per second throughput, and it is backward compatible with the original Thunderbolt. In addition, the new Mac Pro also has dual workstation GPUs, which just allow insanely better graphics and also supports up to three, count that, three 4K displays. If you guys don't know, 4K is way more than 1080p. It's basically four times more than 1080p, a little bit less than that. But the fact that it can support three of those displays, that's essentially 12K quality, is absolutely crazy. And they will be updating it for a new version of Final Cut Pro 10 that will work with these new graphics and the 4K capabilities. As for ports, this beast has three USB 3 ports, six FireWire ports, one gigabit Ethernet port, an HDMI out port, and even more. And as for availability, they said that this thing will be coming later this year, but they did not specify a time, which was kind of interesting, and neither did they specify a price. So we're just going to have to keep on looking forward to that. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about something that got kind of overlooked by a lot of YouTubers was a new thing they announced with iCloud, which is essentially iCloud integration with iWork, which includes pages, numbers, and Keynote, which are the Microsoft equivalents to Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. 
So basically, in my opinion, this is kind of like Google Docs for Apple, except it's much more integrated. So it allows you to work on your files in a web browser, and it allows you to edit Office documents and pages for iCloud and also Keynotes and Numbers. And basically allows you full functionality just in a web browser, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, because it requires a lot of processing power, especially if you don't want it to lag. And they were actually able to show off like a full Keynote presentation, animations and everything within just the Safari web browser. Also, it does work on Windows, which is actually very surprising because usually they make these things work better with Mac but the fact that they can make it work without lag pretty well on Windows is actually pretty extraordinary so guys that's pretty much it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot I've been working very hard on these so please check out my other two videos one of them is gonna be up soon to iOS 7 but I already do have the one up that's about the Mac OS X Mavericks and that is up right now so you can check that out there will be an annotation at the end of this video and there are links down in the description and please look forward to my iOS 7 video that's either gonna be coming up today or tomorrow and please check those out by clicking on the links down in the description below or just just clicking the annotations at the end of this video and please like this video please subscribe to my channel i really appreciate all of your guys' support and ultimately have a nice day